Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mobile UX Podcast, where we talk about mobile design and development from user experience concepts to real implementations. My name is Aditya, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Aishwarya. Today, we're taking a quick break from our spiral down state management and routing, and we're going to be taking a look at fashion websites and breaking down what they're doing right and what they could be doing better. So this should be a little fun and casual episode, and we'll continue to do these uh, dispersed around our schedule and just uh, taking our knowledge of mobile website design and stuff and Mm -hmm. seeing how it reflects in the real world. To begin with, we're going to be critiquing the Banana Republic website, and specifically we're going to be looking at their mobile website because that's where all uh, all the rave is these days. We're going to be breaking up this episode into, I think, four sections. So we're going to be looking at the home and search uh, functionalities. Uh, then we're going to be moving on to the category and product pages. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to be looking at the cart and checkout pages. After that, we're going to be just throwing in any extra tidbits that we have left, maybe that they, maybe that don't fit anywhere into the other three categories. So yeah, let's get started with the home and search page. Uh, let's talk about what we liked first, then we'll get into what we didn't like. Hmm. The first thing that uh, really draw my... Uh, attention and I liked it uh, was that they are showing uh, top categories uh, on the banner and uh, similarly in the uh, in every banner they uh, have a call to action button okay what about having top categories in the home page do you think like improved the experience what like would you like does that help you like get into the uh, navigation or yeah because or? Uh, uh, whenever a user visits a website either he'll be shopping for men or women yeah uh, Else he'll uh, if there are no uh, these top categories aren't there then he need to go uh, go and click the hamburger icon and then uh, uh, navigate to these categories but okay. this uh, short short category which user need to make decision mm-hmm. uh, to navigate to the, the products then uh, they have uh, already shown it in the website uh, right I also really like that the home page as soon as you land on it didn't interrupt you with any banners or a full page thing which is more frequent in um, news sites, I guess, where you have like them trying to get you to subscribe to stuff. Mm. But it's not uncommon to see this in e-commerce too, where they try to get you to subscribe to like their newsletter or like some discount thing. Mm. So I was really happy that even when I was browsing from like a private window, so they didn't know I'd already been to the website, they didn't like uh, Banana Republic didn't uh, throw up like this whole web full page banner on mobile mm. to like sign up for their some like newsletter or download their app even, which would have been oof. <laughs> that would have been tough. Uh, separately from that, uh, I also really liked the way that they handled um, the hamburger navigation hmm. because I think a bad way to do it is when you open up, when you have a hamburger navigation uh, and you only have the top level categories there and as soon as you click on one of them, it takes you to like some other page. Yes. So it's nicer to have the ability to drill down within hmm. that navigation right there. So within this navigation, it lets you click on, like for example, men. And then you can click on the next children categories so you can go directly to men's shirts without having to wait for the whole page to load again. Yes. And also you can then like go browse into like other children of the children categories. Mm -hmm. So you go to like collections and stuff, which is great. Um, I also really liked that um, this is like base. I think everybody does this now. There's nobody who does this wrong, which is that they have the search bar right within the header. Yes. And it's always visible. Mm. Um, other than that, uh, I like it's always important in e-commerce to show your value, some kind of uh, value proposition. So mm. the fact that they have a banner right up top showing, hey, free shipping on orders $50 plus. That's great because it gets you thinking like, all right, like free shipping is one of those things that like everybody is looking for like, hey, do I do you have free shipping? So anywhere you can give shipping information on e-commerce just builds uh, trust with the user. Yes. So that's great. I wonder, I wanted them to do this though, um, because we're in like COVID and stuff. I wonder, mm. and especially with store pickup, like on the rise, like everybody's doing buy mm. online pickup in store. I wonder if they should have had an, had an alternate banner that was like free store pickup or free curbside pickup now. Yeah. Or like contact free, yeah. Hmm. Because uh, uh, they haven't shown uh, uh, this thing, right? Not on, on the, the homepage, yeah. On the homepage, yes. 
So that's one of those things where it's like it's a critical piece of information that I think they could be showing on the home page hmm. uh, for much better, I guess, conversion if somebody's looking to get the product right now. Um, so what did you? What else did you think? Uh, I guess you, what did you not like about the home page? Uh, to be honest, I didn't like that uh, they have in the top header. Uh, top header is used as a uh, site switcher okay. for different brands. Uh, that uh, really annoyed me and made me confused that what it uh, it really is and uh, on clicking those uh, top banner i feel like the site is uh, kind of fluctuating and uh, the whole user experience around that top banner site site switching wasn't uh, uh, very good for me so what would you rather have mm, uh, maybe a drop down not some uh, in the top header but somewhere else so do you think you should be like in the hamburger menu uh, yeah, it can be in a hamburger menu uh, or a category uh, in hamburger menu. There, there can be a drop down to uh, switch uh, the brands. This is interesting. I also wonder like if that experience is even necessary. Like how many people are coming to Banana Republic and thinking, "Ooh, I wish I could go to Old Navy yes. right now. <laughs> yes. Like Correct. I feel like if they wanted Old Navy, they'd go to Old Navy. I mm. get it that it's all one like under the parent gap company or whatever. Mm. But I, it's just, it makes me think maybe they don't need that. Or maybe they could put it in the footer or something. For giving th- uh, this kind of experience, they can uh, maybe create an another marketplace or somewhat uh, not marketplace. Oh, where all the brands are in one place, like a multi-brand uh, Yeah, multi multi brand website mm-hmm. but not like this this is a little was kind of cheap <laughs> Uh, one thing which always uh, which always annoys me about hamburger menu is that uh, uh, you need to figure out yourself that uh, if that uh, hamburger menu is scrollable or, or not and how much uh, amount of information is there after scrolling mm-hmm. like uh, Definitely, you can't show a scroll bar uh, in the hamburger menu. But this uh, hidden things, and when we drill down the categories, uh, then there are man- much many categories which are uh, not coming in the single fold. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of experience that I uh, feel is weird. So what would you rather have them do? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, I don't know, maybe more uh, categories on, uh, for uh, categories. <laughs> So you mean you'd rather have them like be there be more um uh, more chill like more of a yeah m- so yes there's m- like only five at a time <laughs> yeah uh, because uh, th- uh, I'm really not sure that uh, the thing which I'm looking is uh, down the menu or it will come in some uh, inside uh, uh, drilled uh, menus. Well, that's interesting though because. I feel like a lot of sites have scrollable hamburger menus. Yeah, like a lot m- of most of the sites have scrollable hamburger menu, and yeah. uh, that's the thing which I don't like about it. No, but I mean, like, even Google, like, Gmail has yes, this. Yes. <laughs> and you don't like that either? <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. it uh, even in uh, Amazon and in yeah. Flipkart, they have this... Uh, I also hate Amazon's hamburger menu, though, because they have, like, next-level <laughs> annoying things going on there. Uh, yeah, uh, and they have. I think they have uh, very small fonts for uh, that hamburger section, and a lot of information they're trying to have a lot well, of I think some of this is your issue because your font is turned down <laughs> way too much on your phone so yeah. that's probably something that's unique to you I don't know about font size but I know definitely Amazon does this thing where they basically have this whole other like experience within the navigation yes. instead mm. of just like having a simple drill down mm. There's like pages and yes. like so, like there's breadcrumbs and like <laughs> yes. you can open the hamburger menu and go back from a page at the same time. Like there's okay. just it's it's all over the place. Mm. They're trying to build build something new out of the hamburger thing. <laughs> <laughs> trying to build a cheeseburger out of it. <laughs> but all right, we're not here to talk about Amazon though. Yeah. Let's get back to so this thing. I don't know. That's interesting. Uh, that's. I don't know how widespread that thing is about you know not knowing. Do you think if they put like a shadow down here or something, you'd know that this is scrollable? Uh, I don't have any correct uh, answer of way t- how this can be achieved, but there should be some way which can uh, tell me that these items are uh, scrollable and there are a lot more than what sh- we are showing you. Mm. Um, yeah, I have one more thing. Um, I was looking at the search experience. So within the search experience, so say for example, you search like, hoodie or something Hmm. Uh, you got your search results right here Um, if you filter out some of the search results first of all the filter in the search and category pages acts differently which I feel like is unnecessary Hmm, very correct so just have a consistent experience there 
Uh, so then if you filter something out, there's this weird button layout. What's happening is you have like the count of the search results and the clear all button in this row, kind of. And then the filter button is below it. And it's like, I think I'd rather have the buttons be like half and half of the page. Yes. Or maybe like thirds. I don't know. I Maybe you could do like the three items after the buttons in its own row. And then like the uh, clear all and the filter button be half and half. Wow. So now moving on to the category and product pages, arguably maybe even more critical than the home page, because these are like the make or break. If you can get the customer past the category and product page, you can probably get them to buy something from your mm. website. Let's start with the good again. So what did you like about the good, uh, category and product pages? Let's start with the category, then we'll go to the product page. I don't really have uh, anything good to say about category page. <laughs> wow, that's that's tragic. Um, well, first things first, I really liked, uh, actually, uh, you know what, we'll talk about that in the bad later. But um, one of the common, like, uh, mistakes that people, uh, w that we see in websites that are made for desktop first and move to, like, responsibly to mm -hmm. mobile is that the product list is not, like, a two-item grid. Like, it's not, like, a two-by-whatever. It's always, like, a, uh, it's, you often see a one, one product at a time, mm -hmm. which is, like, a, just a disappointing experience altogether. So I'm happy to see that they used a proper grid. Uh, other than that, I like that they're showing their savings. So an important part of conversion is showing that if the customer buys right now, they're going to save this much amount of money and they should always know how much that is. So I like that they're showing both the percentage and the actual dollars that they're saving. Mm -hmm. um, and they also have like for some products, they actually even say that like there's going to be some discounts that are added later on within the cart. So that, so that like clearly states, uh, so for example, we have this product that's $98 and it says 50% off at checkout, extra 10% with a code. So this is a lot of value add that they wouldn't see otherwise because the price isn't slashed. Yes. It's stuff that you only see when you go to the cart. Uh, these are the stuff that uh, a user came to know when uh, he lands on the product page. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's good to uh, displaying them here so he can choose to land on these page or he can choose that product yeah. on the basis of the discounts and those offer but uh, this one thing which uh, annoyed me is uh, that uh, these texts are, uh, are very uh, very eye catchy okay. uh, i know that these should be uh, very eye catchy, uh, catchy but uh, not more than the uh, product image or product name itself you think it's kind of like an information overload yeah yeah, I uh, means uh, just changing the uh, uh, color to something little less warmer can be a good user experience because uh, now I, uh, the in, uh, primary information which my eyes are catching is, are those discounts only. Yeah, you can't. It's even more prominent than, like the product name. Yes. Yeah, I wonder. You know, sometimes looking at these sites, I wonder if people actually like feel like a bad experience is more uh, like professional than bad like if you're like a common person browsing website if you don't have a bad experience on a website it's almost like you can't trust them because <laughs> the website isn't like oh we're too big to care about our website you don't get that essence from it so you automatically feel like oh maybe this brand isn't worth it uh, who knows um yeah other than that uh they ha this was really interesting i saw this thing where uh here let me see if i can regenerate right here when on our display because it's, it's I don't I do not understand why they have this, but um, if we go into their inspecting, so this is super. I don't under, I've never seen this before at least. So there's this thing right here. There's, they have this um, hidden uh, HTML element in an H2 tag, mm -hmm. and it just says product grid. So if we want to see it, all you have to do is go inspect their website, turn off its positioning, and it's right there. <laughs> And I don't understand what this is for. Is this like some, I, mean, I put it in the good because I wonder if it's some kind of SEO thing that like if Google sees you have a product grid in your website, because it's an H2 tag too. Like it's not even like some like measly P tag. It's like H2, it's like prominent. That's something mm. the SEO is going to pick up. And especially because this isn't a PWS, this is all loaded on server side. Mm. So do you think this could be some kind of SEO trick or do you think it's just like some testing thing that they didn't take out? I think uh, it, can be a testing thing. <laughs> Not sure about the SEO. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, what I really liked is websites need to do this more is they have this filter for what products can be picked up in store. So you click on this and automatically it's like you're looking at a list of all the products that are available in a store you've selected. Yes. 
So that just makes it super handy. So you don't have to like go into every product page. So like you don't have this heartbreak of you find a product you love and you go into the page and it's like, oh, I can't pick it up in the store nearby. Well, okay. Hmm. Now you can start with knowing what products are available to be picked up right away. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for the category page on the good side, which is quite a bit. Not 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 bad. Um, uh, apart from that, uh, let me see if I have anything that I didn't like. Uh, until then, if you have something, feel free to chime in. Yes, um, there's one another thing which I didn't like about uh, category pages. Uh, on scrolling uh, category page uh, for uh, a bit long, there should be a back to top button uh, uh. or something. Oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. I wanted to talk about one thing on the hamburger menu. This was super annoying because, well, right now we're using it on a computer, so it doesn't really um, basically show up as easily. But uh, the way that they're closing this, usually when you're on a website, the way you close it is you click away from it and it closes. Mm. And on apps, you have a little bit more control over like the touch and stuff. So you yes. swipe it away to close it and you swipe it back out to open it. And here they tried to emulate that close swipe to close thing using some kind of JavaScript, I imagine. Okay. But when you actually use it on your... Um, device? Device, yeah, basically. On your phone, it's... When you're scrolling, you don't always scroll like straight up and down. When you scroll, you sometimes kind of scroll like this or kind of scroll like yes. that. Hmm. And there's like some kind of direction to it. And I'd be scrolling down and it would just close the hamburger menu. And it was the most <laughs> annoying thing. I was like, I, at first I didn't get it. I was like, what are you, what, how is this happening? I was like, okay, so they tried to outsmart themselves basically. Well, they have outsmarted themselves. And they've just done too much appification for their own good. Yeah, you can try it right now. And the reason this doesn't happen when we use this in apps is because the decision of what direction you're taking your swipe is taken by the multi-touch system that's set up by the device manufacturer. Yeah, I just saw yeah. it. it closed the hamburger menu. Right. And it's just like maybe like turn up the tolerance so that it like it requires more yeah. of a swipe to send mm -hmm. it away. Like it works perfectly when you're giving a demo like, oh, I swipe it and it goes away. But when you're actually using it, you're trying to scroll up and down because I bet the person who tested this website went into Google Chrome, inspect elemented and used like the proper like <laughs> two finger scrolling on a computer. Didn't actually try to like yeah, use their finger on a phone. Yeah, correct. I'm sorry to the people who worked on this website were really not being nice. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, okay, let's move on to the product page now. Uh, yeah. So for the goods and bads, again, let's start with the good. So what do you feel in Australia? Uh, like I said uh, for the hamburger uh, that they should show how much information is there to scroll so I really like the uh, s this uh, indication about how many images are there uh, mm -hmm. in the gallery and uh, I really like the uh, gal product gallery itself like uh, you can just uh, zoom and uh, see the uh, image and mm -hmm. uh, it's not a uh, uh, some uh, annoying uh, user experience that when you are clicking on that image and uh, a pop-up came so over the whole window, yeah. yeah and uh, many a times in e-commerce websites i uh, find it hard to uh, get a uh, yeah easy product image or mm -hmm. pr product gallery uh apart from uh if you have anything else you can go for it, or i had one thing i wanted to talk about the scrolling of the page uh I uh, not uh, I have that much about the product gallery. Uh, okay. Then after the gallery, I like how they have shown the color. Okay, wait. Before we move down, though, I just want to mm. quickly talk about what we loaded into this page. You see that it's already scrolled down past the header and the multi-brand switching mm. thing. This is great because I don't know if they've tested this for all phones, but we have what we're looking at here is it's um loaded for like the iPhone size, iPhone 10 size. And within one fold, they perfectly have the name, the images, the price, the discount, the reviews, and the colors. This is like all the critical information you could ever want to show in one yes. fold, and it's perfectly in there. So I really like that. And it, every time you go to a product page, it skips the header because it knows you don't need that. Instead, hmm. give, instead gives you the critical information you need for the product. So now you were saying something about uh, you like the color selection? Yeah, uh, color selection is pretty straightforward. Other than that, I really liked um, uh, when we go down to like adding it to our cart. Uh, first of all, the button is really easy to like feel out. There's no other competing pieces of information that are drawing your eye away from it. Yes. Uh, and I liked it's always good to show shipping and uh, return information. 
Yeah. So the one number one thing that they're worried about is what happens if I get the product and I don't like it. So mm-hmm. letting them know that returns are easy. Yes. You just walk into it, any store or you have 90 days to return it builds trust super fast. And it's one of the reasons that people like going to marketplaces because they're generally more lenient with this kind of stuff versus yes. brands. Hmm. Um, other than that, shipping is also great because people want to know how soon they're going to get it. They don't want to wait till checkout because mm-hmm. they're going to only they're only going to add it to their cart if they know that they're going to get it in the amount of time that they yes. want it. Correct. Uh, no, that's all I had for the good. So, even the size uh, selector is quite uh, quite clear, uh, and uh, user can uh, easily check uh, if his, uh, uh, if his interested size is available or not. Yeah, um, they don't have to select the size first and wait for the inventory to check out. Yes, uh, because most most of the time uh, I land uh, to a product page and then uh, select on the size and then I get to know if uh, how many size and which size are available. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they are showing it upfront in the product page only, mm-hmm. uh, just for in a scroll. So that's an interesting thing. What about the bad on the product page? What do you got? To be honest, I d- uh, really dislike uh, that. There's a a lot of information that's uh, visible to eyes, mm-hmm. uh, like this uh, in product details and fabric and care. Uh, this can be uh, a more larger space. Uh, I feel that they are uh, fitting uh, m- much information in a small size. What I don't like is that like there's they have two tabs set up on this product page for these details. They have mm-hmm. the product details and then they have fabric fabric care because there's two categories of cards. Mm-hmm. But you can't click on the fabric care like header to scroll to those cards. You have to like manually scroll to them instead of like you can't just click on fabric and care. Which seems very counterintuitive to how like we've seen yeah this is a totally uh, confusing user experience uh, what yeah. i thought is uh, that uh, that is an another tab and not listed here this kind of reminds me that in general uh, when i was looking at the carousels on the banana republic website i noticed they don't go like edge to edge very like they none of them do hmm. there's very few pieces like uh for like uh, also viewed and those kind of things go edge to edge if the carousel is uh, not full width it uh, feels me that it's inside the website only mm-hmm. and if uh, uh, it don't cares about the margins and paddings around it uh, then it uh, for me it uh, usually looks like that it's out of the website coming somewhere uh, coming from somewhere else and other it feels like more important part uh, in the whole web page mm-hmm. because everyone is respecting some borders and uh, you uh, you are not getting that the way i see it is like for example we take these like there's like this carousel of cards in the banana mm-hmm. republic website i'm not i don't think that the cards have to go edge to edge but i think when you're scrolling between them i like to see the cards touch the edge instead of being cut off like five pixels before the edge when you're scrolling mm. I'd like to see them scroll through to the edge. I feel like that gives it a much more native-like feeling instead of like having a global padding that you see. Like it's mm. obvious and it's kind of immersion breaking. I feel like so I'm a sucker for having those like the carousel go edge to edge, even if the product like the card itself doesn't like when it's uh, resting and you're not scrolling it, it doesn't like hit the edges. For yes. example. I'd still rather have it like when you're scrolling. I'd mm. rather have them like clip from the edges and not clip from the margin of the padding that you've set up because uh, it uh, gives uh, your eyes information that it's scrollable and uh, it's come uh, there's something after the edge also right that's also true that if the next card is kind of peeking through you can see that oh there's something more to like look at here but in general I, native apps gener- what we i feel like the big difference between websites and apps is that web apps always feel like they're like to the metal like they're more native it feels Mm -hmm. like and when you have a website where a carousel has like margins and paddings around it it feels like you've put it in a browser and now it's like closed Mm -hmm. off and it's not as native Mm -hmm. so when you give it that whole edge to edge thing it feels more native i feel like uh what else did i not like about this um oh this is a big one Mm -hmm. so when we go into the store locator on their product page like we saw that they what we liked about the size selector is that the inventory is already there so you don't have to like Click the size to yeah. find out if the inventory's mm-hmm. there. But yeah, so basically the issue on the store locator, though, is that uh, it doesn't show you the inventory of the stores before you select them. Hmm. You have to select the store, you have to find out. Check. Yeah, you have to go back to the product page to find out if that inventory is available or not, which I feel like 
the exact wrong way to do it. Like if I'm going to select a store, I don't want to keep going back to that window yes. to find the store. Mm. So they should, if they can do it, I would think it would make way more sense to just show if it's in stock and available to pick yeah. up right now or not. Or maybe they can just uh, have a uh, quick filter or about that that only shows the stores which have uh, your yeah, product. Yeah, only show in stock stores. So like maybe just something up top. I do like though that they show the distance from the zip code you've put in though, which yes. is really handy. It helps mm. you in decision making. Yes. All right. Um, after uh, ding, ding, ding. all right. Last thing I have on the product page, then we can move on. Mm-hmm. We've been really roasting this product page. Um, they have this great thing. This is it's a great start, but it's not all there yet. They have this thing called Shop to Look. Shop to Look is great because you don't have to think about what I should buy with a look. You can buy a look all together, and it's all like perfectly set up. Mm-hmm. Problem here though is that all right. So I've landed on like say I like this really great T-shirt, and I'm like all right. So I have. Uh, I should buy these four other products. But as soon as I click on one of the products, I leave the product page from where I found the look and I go to this. And this doesn't immediately show me the look I came from. So I, now without going back to that product page, I don't know what other three products I wanted to buy with the look. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so I uh, I really like this uh, way with it. And uh, when I uh, checked that, it's uh, I actually didn't click the shop button mm-hmm. and uh, went to that product. Uh, I think uh, that uh, uh, a better user experience could be to navigate the user to that product uh, via click uh, click on the product image. And on the shop button, they should mean uh, they, uh, uh, that shop button should be adding that product to the cart. But how would you add that product to the cart without selecting the size and the color? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, maybe <laughs> some AI which is calculating uh, <laughs> your sizes from the above <laughs> selected size. Um, the way I thought about it, I had two ideas for this basically. One was when you go to a product page from shop to look, open that new product page in a new tab. Hmm. So you can come back to the origin and look at the size guide from there. The other thought I had was give full on pages to all the looks you create. So each look you when you click on it, you don't click on you don't click open this hamburger menu and click shop up individu- individually. Instead you click on the whole look and then that look opens up into a page and you have like uh, you have four products on that, and you select the size and color of them right there. Yeah, so, that, uh, that's yeah. an interesting uh, uh, user experience, and a user can select uh, all the sizes, and yeah. uh, it kind of uh, gives a feeling of a configurable or bundle product. Yeah, because that's kind of what it is. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like you're associating them. You can see how you can decide how tightly you want to note that, like uh, integrate them. But yeah, it's basically a configurable product. Uh, yeah, and uh, once a user lands to such an experience, and uh, he's selecting size, and um, it's. Uh, means uh, user feels more confident and uh, maybe the conversion it uh, yeah. increases the conversion rate definitely the less you make the user jump around the mm. better it is yes. and what's also nice is if you do that you have now that you've created a page for it you can eat, have one stop play a one stop place to pick up and store mm. so you don't have to go to the four different pa- product pages see where they're all available and then do the common denominator yes. yourself you have one store locator it tells you where all four pieces mm. can be found at once and you book the whole thing all together correct all right next up the final two we have the cart and the checkout process Mm. let me add a product to our cart so we can what do you think about this pop-up that shows up every time you add a product to cart what do you think about this Uh, to be honest i like the this thing Uh, usually i don't like uh, pop-ups coming in the website but uh, it was kind of giving me an information about what i uh, just recently did and i can just cross verify it I'm not sure how to feel about it because de- at least it's not like just sending me straight to the cart. Mm-hmm. So it's not like a complete break. But do you like it better than just having a simple notification uh, that we have in like Happy Bar? Yeah, uh, notification is kind of uh, really good because um, if you are on the product page, these information are in front of you only, mm-hmm. uh, like the color, size, quanti- uh, quantity, and price. And uh, after giving. Uh, this uh, pop-up you are showing the same things uh, but uh, to me uh, it uh, reassured me and give me a uh, chance to check uh, the things that uh, you added the right item yeah, to the cart because uh, I'm a kind of uh, person who usually miss 
small things so f- for me uh, just checking <laughs> uh, through all the information once again is uh, mm. good so i like this uh, experience i like that it does tell you that's kind of this urgency element which is always good on e-commerce which is it sells you some of the most popular items are um you can't keep them in your cart for more than two hours what i don't like though is it does it doesn't tell you if this item is one of those <laughs> so it's just completely up to you to guess which i guess is a good way to create more urgency by not telling them if this is an urgent item or not <laughs> but like i also rather like just tell me like do i need to check out or do i not need to check out right now like i don't know that was one of those things uh it's at least they did give like two buttons they have keep shopping and they have an x button to close the modal so it's not like a complete disaster on the cart page Mm -hmm. what what do you have for this do you like it do you not like it Uh, i uh, like the checkout page it was giving me all the uh, necessary information Mm -hmm. uh, in front of my eyes and uh, i was uh, the uh, action buttons were also clearly stated once again like that we have the shipping free shipping uh written out a couple times so it's Mm -hmm. at the top with the banner with the header they also have it right above the checkout button yes so that's great and then they also uh, i like that they have the promo code right within the fold and it also shows you you have 50 percent off everything so gives you the amount of money you're saving Mm -hmm. right off the bat one thing i really liked is this checkout button the button that's going to get you to the next step is always accessible. So when you open the page, it's at the like basically the top of the page, so it's ready mm-hmm. to go. Mm-hmm. But when you scroll down and you don't see it, it shows up in this sticky piece of the footer, and that I felt was a great way to keep it accessible at all times. Got uh, it. I've seen Nike does this for their Add to Cart button. Okay. So when you're scrolling and you have the Add to Cart button in the inline place, it takes away the footer. But when you're scrolling or you first land on the page. It keeps this like sticky add to cart button at the top at the bottom, which I felt like was a great way to because one of the things we always want to do is have the most important action always available. So yeah. having this sticky like this is a great way to do it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, in uh, different uh, steps for checkout, they have always showed the uh, items uh, number of items to yeah. in every step. So th- this was kind of. Mm, uh, uh, easily accessible information which um, sometimes I feel uh, maybe in Amazon uh, I wait for all the steps to end uh, so I can just recheck that what uh, things I have ordered and yeah. uh, kind of just go through all those things again yeah I do like that they showed what you're you're, n- you're never lost you're never confused about what you're doing mm. which is great about the checkout process yes. In general, I do feel like the checkout process is the strong, uh, strongest element within the site. Mm. Apart from everything else, I have the least bad things to say about the checkout. Like, it's pretty solid. Uh, cool. One thing I didn't like, though, I'm not sure if this is like on purpose or not. I didn't like that the checkout button and these buttons in general don't fit with the theme of the website. Mm. It feels like they just took like a drop-in payment plugin component and just threw it in there. It's like, all right, call it a day. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, that feels like... Uh, uh, those kind of button. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if that uh, red color from uh, uh, product information, <laughs> the red color of uh, number of items in cart and this checkout. No, this is, is actually <laughs> orange. It looks kind of orange on the TV we're looking at. It okay. looks kind of red on the TV, but it's orange. It's like hot orange. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's probably they've just uh, picked uh, up uh, <laughs> the payment integration code and uh, just uh, use it in there, right? <laughs> yeah oh but i like because like all you have to do is just what like make because all their other buttons have no borders so they're all hmm. sharp corners and black that's all they had to do <laughs> uh, but it is what it is hmm. uh so when we continue to check out i'm not sure if this is still something i'm confused about but i felt like the page that was like the previous page could have been this page. Yes. Did you feel that too mm-hmm. when you were yeah. browsing? Uh, I really like, I feel like this is something that I struggle with right now when we're designing our demo website right now is how to like give a good equal amount of weight to returning customer and guest customers. Because you want guest customers to be able to check out as fast as possible and mm-hmm. not make them feel like they have to like sign in or create an account. Correct. But still, you don't want your returning customers to like have to find the login button. Hmm. You still want it to be kind of easy. So I feel like they did. They found a really nice balance of giving them kind of like a tabbed look at the top. Yes, correct. Which I think we should probably take hmm. away from this website too is 
uh, revamp that personal details because right now our login button is at the all the way at the bottom of the um, our personal details like the first yes. step page. One thing I really liked about the checkout that I want to talk about is the autofill was amazing. Which the, sorry? So when you go into the when you go into like say guest checkout mm-hmm. and you have to say so you continue uh, whatever like once you filled in your email and you go to that part where you have to put in your first name last name address and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, I was using, there's two ways to autofill it, basically. One is you use, like, your browser smartly fills in your stuff for you. Yes. Uh, sometimes site have bad, sites have bad uh, implementations of that autofill process. Mm. But this site has it down to, like, a T. It's perfect. I really like that. So you click one button on your browser, and you're done filling in all the information. Yeah, that's a very powerful uh, feeling which uh, yes. <laughs> you get. <laughs> So like, oh, it's perfectly integrated. Mm. The other thing I really liked was um, they have Google Address Autocompleter okay. integrated. So that was amazing, which was you type in, you start typing in your address, and boom, Google does the whole work for you, Okay. and it's done. So even if you don't have the address you want saved in your address book or in the browser or whatever, hmm. uh, it takes care of it like that. So that was amazing. I loved the autofill. Uh, yeah, the only bad thing I really had to say about the checkout process was the, whatchamacallit, the orange button but other than that i imagine they're yeah it looks like they're using uh this checkout process for across all their websites so i imagine all four teams are working on this <laughs> so it's the best and everybody like the real site doesn't get as much love uh great so let's work on our uh, let's go back to our main site now and mm-hmm. let's uh, take some time if you have any extra tidbits we can talk about those i really like uh, how they uh, use this bottom space yeah uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> it was also annoying me at some places like at the product page uh, it comes uh, after some time and uh, even in the checkout pr- uh, page they uh, they are using this uh, so maybe this uh, bottom thing can be a part of some pages and not all the pages mm. so check out imagine like the cart page right because the normal checkout doesn't have this i don't see it here yeah. yeah. So it's on the everything but the checkout process, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I do. I still feel like it's a good value add though when you're on the product page, right? To like show that you have discounts and stuff. Uh, no. Uh, they they were also messing with the information in the first fold. So okay. So you think you'd be able to show more information if hmm. this wasn't taking up such a huge piece of it? Yeah. Also, uh, this information is kind of whole. Uh, uh, website wide information uh, uh, instead of uh, the, uh, this uh, if uh, they have uh, managed to put uh, product uh, or that specific page uh, uh, kind of information in there uh, information for that pro- specifically pro- specific product only but uh, this uh, constant 50% off on everything on every page is it's uh, over overdoing it yes I had this other thing which kind of drove me crazy when I was looking at this, um, which was the buttons. So here you see these. Uh, so the buttons on the store locator, right? Hmm. Uh, you see how the f- there's like the text is a little bit off center. Yes. The reason for that is because the line height and the text font size are the the font size is too big for the line height. Okay. So all they have to do really, all they have to do is go in here and just pick one. So you either just turn <laughs> off one. the height and boom, you're set. Hmm. So if they just turn off their button line height and let the font size take care of itself, I think they'd be looking at much more consistent buttons. And it's not like it's breaking the UI in any way. Hmm. So easy win right there. Okay, yeah. So on mobile, hmm. uh, on desktop, for some reason, however they designed their website, they have to have this extra amount of padding on the right of their product grid. Uh, I think they should just straight up get rid of it and make it symmetrical because right now it's asymmetrical and maybe it's one of those things where if your site has some bugs it looks more expensive, who knows. <laughs> and this is one of those things that I think wouldn't happen if they were making a mobile first website. What's happening here is they've made the desktop view first and mm-hmm. then they're trying to bring it down to the mobile users. Right. Which leads to these weird like all they have to do is write like a breakpoint uh identifier, what do you call it? Like a media query, right? Yes. And they'd be set. Uh, so, Aditya, have you tried uh, the safe area thing for this website? Yeah, it's uh, broken everywhere. They have mm. not done it. You have any thoughts about it? Uh, no, uh, I wasn't able to check uh, on my mobile around no, safe area. Like, where do you think they should be using it? 
<laughs> I uh, have a uh, means I don't have a device which uh, messes with. Uh, no, but I mean, like you still know where the issues would be. So, like for example, you know that as soon as you yes. open this on iOS, this is gonna be like covered hmm. by the bar. So immediately, like this is like an easy like. All right, obviously they should be putting like an extra bit of padding right there, but they haven't done that. Hmm. Um, similarly, on the checkout page, like when you go, anything that's stuck to the bottom is kind of messed up. So when you go over here. And you have this like uh, checkout thing that shows up down here. This, okay. uh, you can add some extra safe areas there. Hmm. It's like uh, simple things like that. Anything because they have a few elements that are attached to the bottom, so all of those should just have safe areas. Yes. Uh, also, that uh, drop down was coming in uh, bottom, right? The drop down. Uh, where you selected the size. No, that's no. our website. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was some uh, thing in the bottom, uh, and. It, Oh, do you mean the when iOS zooms into like random input fields? No, that? no. Uh, uh, when we were discussing uh, those things, uh, I have j uh, uh, seen some uh, drop down similar something to drop down in the bottom of the uh, page. Yeah, that was the here. One second, let me pull it up. Uh, where you like this? Uh, the selector. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Yeah. So this is the input thing. I'm glad you brought this up. So, uh, do you want to talk about this or what? Uh, you know it <laughs> better. Um, yeah, so basically iOS, we've talked about this in our earlier podcast too. Um, it's mind-boggling that there isn't like, oh, why do they do this? But they do it. And mm -hmm. I, Apple deems it necessary that if you have a font size smaller than 16, normal people can't read your website. So they're going to decide what size your font should be. So um, I'm going to show the bad version first. So if you have your website uh, and you have like, so like... Uh, on the category page, for example, they have this where they have the sort button. When you click the sort button, the browser select drop down basically opens hmm. up. Uh, when it does, iOS zooms into the sort button because it's reading it as an input field. And, and then you select the different whatever thing you want from the carousel at the bottom. As soon as you're, you have to zoom into anything on the website that's not part, like apart from like the gallery or something, hmm. you've broken the immersion of like, oh, it's an app because apps don't zoom in. So I feel like they, oh, and the solution is super simple. All you have to do is make all of your labels font size 16. <laughs> it's like one rem, basically. Uh, and as soon as you do that, uh, you can, uh, iOS stops messing with the view size of your website. Here, I'll play it too. And so you'll see um, when we click on sort, you, it doesn't zoom in the page or anything. And you kind of stay in that immersion of, oh, I'm in an app or something. Hmm. So... That was what I was talking about. I imagine, I don't think it's an issue on their search because it doesn't zoom in there. So that's fine. But for all their sort and anywhere else that you have an input, just make your font size 16 and save your users the hassle of zooming in and out. Your right. iOS users, because those are the ones that matter. Let's be real. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah. Oh, do you want to talk about uh, this thing? Uh, one sec. Uh, the way that they handle the category facets thing. Uh, so here what I wanted to talk about was on the category page, they have this great uh, little filtering navbar thing, very similar to what we have in Capybara right now. Yes. Uh, did you take a moment to look at how they've implemented it, though? Mm, I've uh, checked the user experience and not uh, uh, how they have uh, used the layout or in markup. Okay. I'm just going to hover it over real quick, and you can probably just figure it, see, but just by what... It, what so basically, they have... Uh, the way they've done it is they have three flex items mm -hmm. inside of one flex box. That, that flex item is a flex box itself. This is kind of similar what we were thinking about how to do it. Is we were thinking yes. about, oh, we could do mm -hmm. like by nesting the flex huh. boxes. This is basically what they've done, mm -hmm. which we discredited as like being too much of a hack, mm -hmm. is what they've put on their official website. Basically, they've created three flex items, give them all grow to one so they're all equal. Mm -hmm. uh, then they, within them, they've flex aligned stuff to the left, right, center. So you have this one flex line to the center, uh, this one justified to the left, justified to the right, start and end uh, within so their containers. They are sure that uh, they won't be adding any ad another uh, element on this. Idea. Yeah. And also, like, I just, it, it pains me because it's also just from the perspective of like maintainable code, it's harder to understand what's going on. And it's just, it's not like, it's not the end of the world, but it's just, it's, it's just improper, I feel like. 
and this is like one of those places where we can loop back all the way to our first episode where we used CSS Grid to yes. fix this exact thing. Mm. What we would do instead is create a grid of three columns. Grid allows us to justify each item itself. Uh, and so naturally, uh, flex uh, justifies self, start, yes. center, end. You got three columns. You could even label the columns so it's easy to tell which one does what. Mm. So that's super easy. You can rearrange the items, everything. I don't know. It's just, I, that, I was surprised that they actually bothered to like go through and do this hacky little solution. Apart from all these things, uh, I have uh, uh, noticed that they have put a lot of text uh, all over the website. Yeah. The whole website is full of textual information. See the ho full homepage is uh, giving a lot of information to grasp. Uh, uh, I usually prefer minimal uh, things and uh, there should not be these much of information for user to gra grasp. This is interesting because I agree with you. I'm 100% on board with you here. This, like, I don't understand. I, don't, I think I'm wrong though because Alibaba, Amazon, yes. Mitra, and then like evidently Banana Republic, hmm. all of these websites have this information like whatever, especially when there's like a sale going on, yes. you cannot understand the website. Yes. It's literally impossible. Hmm. But it makes me think like maybe this is just how people shop. Like maybe they just like to have like a complete sensory overload of information and they just have to figure out like do people like this? Like who like looking at all right, just like well, there's like they have this banner for afterpay. Literally can't even read the text inside of the hmm. banner. And all of them have different size fonts inside of them. Like, there's yes. no consistency. Like, what's hmm. going on here? Uh, especially, as you said, uh, in the time of sale, like, this is a festive season. So, I was just trying to uh, purchase uh, two or three things from a website. And uh, uh, so, I clicked on uh, some categories that uh, that uh, sale was showing. And I, I, I was about to buy from uh, that uh, category only. Uh, so, I, <laughs> I really didn't end up anywhere. Uh, I was just uh, navigating around those yeah. sales only and I wasn't able to get to the that product. Then I just yeah. uh, searched that specific product on the search bar and then purchased it. That happens all the time. It's so annoying because um, what you end up doing is like you're clicking through like four different like uh, collections basically yes. because there's like one color uh, the uh, whatever christmas collection then you yeah. have like the christmas like eve collection within <laughs> the christmas collection then within that you have the men's christmas collection then within that you have like the dad and kids collection yes, like, yes. oh my god just get me to the category page. yes man <laughs> all right that was mm. just uh, that that is painful so yeah that's pretty much all i had uh did you have anything else uh, i see you in the notes we have something written about an error page yes uh, have you ever came across some error in the website no but i'm down to go to it <laughs> so what's error uh n not the actual error page uh, so yeah something just uh, uh i don't know what i uh, i did <laughs> what i did wrong uh, i'm uh, messed up uh, with the website and uh, the this sorry uh, notation uh, came uh, in a uh, in place of this uh, free shipping header <laughs> and uh, the other part of the web page was just uh, uh, below this uh, error information sorry. So uh, it was kind of uh, a bad experience uh, means uh, when you have nav navigated to the, this uh, error page. Now I understand the whole error page looks like this only. But when uh, on the, phone, yeah. Yeah, the user is on some another page and uh, some small error uh, uh, comes uh, while browsing. So this error page just uh, uh, comes, uh, this error message just comes bit, uh, after this, uh, after shipping header and the rest of the page is uh, after uh, yeah. uh, this message. So th that was kind of annoying. It's also, I, I want to talk, I want to connect this back to what you're talking about too much text, but it's just <laughs> funny that they have an error page and within the fold you can see the feedback button. <laughs> it's just, it's so ironic. But um, this page is a great example of what you were talking about with too much text. Mm. There's, I feel like throughout the website, because their color scheme is like black and white, mm. sometimes there's just not enough contrast. Like yes. to send the eye in one direction. Instead you're looking at everything that's kind of grayish and it just confuses where you're supposed right. to be looking at. Cool. Um, Last thing that I had that I'm promised to stop berating this website um, is 
uh, the physics of the carousel. So they, they're using one library, JavaScript library, for all these carousels. Hmm. But all of the carousels have different physics. Like the, when you like the same flick does like different things on every single carousel. Like how hard? I, I can't imagine it'd be that hard <laughs> to just use the same kind of physics across all of them, right? Like yeah, this um, makes sense. Even when you're uh, using the same library for all of yeah. uh, those carousel, you can just have uh, some global setting for this physics. Yeah, and I feel like there's like the category ones move way too fast, and then like some of like the mass carousel moves like barely at all. <laughs> it's like come on, man, just figure this out. All right. Um, overall, though, what we, how would you rate out of ten? What are we rating the Banana Republic website? Uh, I'll rate around six point five out 6. of ten. Six point five. Yeah, it's not the worst. It's not, you could definitely do a lot worse than this. I, yes. I think I'd have to agree with you. Six point five seven out of ten. Hmm. So let's try to see if we can keep like a leaderboard for this, <laughs> and let's see who's on top, who's on the bottom. But for now, we got Banana Republic at six point five. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching the Mobile UX podcast or listening in. Uh, next week's episode, we hope to have some inter- an interesting guest with us to talk about... What are we talking about? Uh, routing. <laughs> no, we're talking about state management. Yeah, state management. State management within view storefront. It's going to be mm-hmm. really interesting. See you guys then. Bye. Bye.